Can you see us there? I don't. Uh, I do not. Yeah, we are live. Hi, everyone. This is uh, Ennis and uh, Chris. We are going to do a live stream today and uh, talk about a uh, topic uh, named uh, predictions for 2024 and, uh, and try to answer some of your questions. Uh, hey, Chris, how are you today? I'm doing pretty good, Ennis. How's it going? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, finally, was, finally, finally, a was, relaxed day. Yeah, relaxed uh, day. You know, everything is covered until tomorrow. And uh, if someone calls us, we can uh, still answer and maybe try to oh, cover sure. some people. For sure. Yeah. So we haven't done this. Um, we haven't done this for a year or so, right? Maybe even more. Was it? I believe it was back in February, twenty twenty-three. Oh, was it? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, cool. So, what happened with you um, in 2023, uh, with you and your trucks and business in general? And it's people came in, people went out. I had actually my initial carriers. Unfortunately, both of them went out of business. I checked their MC on FMCSA, and they're out of business you know what happened in 2023 we've seen rates that were unbearable even for semi trucks and at that point i was dispatching the box truck guys and man that was a tough deal that was a tough time we used to have some solid weeks but i would say like 80 percent of the time we were running we were running at a loss so it was just unbearable at, at one point like i believe mid july beginning of august they just stopped working. They tried Amazon as well, but Amazon as well, they, it went down. Like rates on Amazon were like dollar twenty, dollar thirty, and they were yeah. just dollar thirty going to I don't know for for I don't know maybe San Diego going to Arizona and just that head back home. So that's not even dollar thirty. That's a pure loss. So they ended up just giving up. Some new people came in. You know yourself. We have we have uh, the team drivers in San Luis. With the box truck still pushing yeah. through with them yeah they have been with us for what a year now yeah a year now they started with a one-year-old mc and they passed two years mark right now so okay. yeah we're pushing through with them okay. but we're doing regional with them like regional. 350 miles around st louis all that area not too crazy not too far deep you know just keeping it right there but and now we're doing more, yeah we're doing partials uh mo most of your trucks now are semi trucks yes correct okay that cool. is correct <clears throat> so uh i uh made a video in 2022 it was uh i believe in march well no it was before that but on my youtube ca uh, channel it still shows this video as being one year old and but youtube does that even if your video is one year and 11 months old it will still show it as one year old even though it's almost yeah, yeah. yeah. so uh, this video i actually made made it it was either in february or february or march of 2022 and i made some predictions about uh, that year because everything was starting to go down and i kind of noticed like the fuel went up suddenly but the rates um stayed the same uh, the maintenance costs went up uh fuel insurance uh, trucks equipment trailers everything went up and i kind of wanted just to play uh, with that video and then at, at the beginning i said that hey it will be fun to watch this uh, video next year to see how wrong i was or you know maybe even right so i want to <clears throat> kind of reflect back on that video first if you don't mind no of course and you weren't yeah. wrong everything happened <laughs> everything happened i'll share uh the screen i'm we're not gonna listen to the video i'm just gonna share uh just to show okay. you that video okay yeah Anis, can we actually do this uh, like i'm checking the live right here can we have both of our screens like somewhere on the side of the of the whole 
you know youtube channel right here and on the other side there could be the low board there could be yeah. this video you know can we do yeah. that well we are doing this through google meet and what it does is like it uh, automatically right. shows the person that's talking exactly. okay so when i you know like if, if someone is watching it if i'm talking they see me if you're talking they see you okay okay yeah okay that works yeah uh i i'm sure there might be a setting inside uh you know for next time but that's that's how it's set up like yeah but you, you can see my screen right i can i can there is some delay right here like a couple of seconds but yeah i can okay yeah that's that's normal so this yeah. is the video that um that uh, i'm talking about uh what will happen to tracking industry uh in 2022 uh so we have uh, uh you know like what's going to happen to small carriers what's going to happen to trucks small trucking uh freight brokers etc so the funniest thing about this video and i'm, I'm just gonna uh, turn it off for now so this is the video uh the funniest thing about this video is that uh, i was making predictions for 2022 but most of those came uh, to be true in 2023 so so we all thought like 2022 was, was gonna be a bad year and uh, you know we just just gonna have to wait for it to pass and no one had you know had um predicted that this is gonna go through throughout the whole 2023 and most likely uh, a good portion of of 2024 so not no one uh, had had we known at that time man you know <laughs> everyone would have left the, the the business because some people you know like like me i'm in this for long term but there are a lot of people who see like if something goes down they're just gonna shut down the doors and just just and i've had carriers i've had carriers who were like literally running on the edge like they were telling me if something happens with the truck not even like a major issue like something like yeah. a few a few thousand dollars repair i'm gonna be out and i believe them i knew yeah. that actually because they were running constantly at a loss without taking the maintenance what maintenance money you know there is no money for a driver pay what maintenance money so i believe yeah. that and many people actually went out of business because of it in yeah. 2023 especially yeah. I not I, just you, I've, I've done a lot of marketing and posts and you know like predictions of people on freight waves industry professionals that have been doing this for i don't know 15 20 years on the broker side everybody was predicting in the beginning of 2023 that things will start to change during like after maybe maybe during the summertime but they were confident that it's gonna happen by by september nothing really happened by september we i think i believe we hit the worst september october and november those yeah. rates were like terrible terrible and there were no loads posted so everybody was kind of wrong with the time frame of prediction but yeah. everything happened everything happened everything did happen and and there were some surprises too um uh, if you like like you said i had the owner operators tell me the same thing hey one one small repair and i i'm not gonna be able to like imagine like that's constant pressure if you if you have oh just one God. truck uh, let alone if you have multiple trucks but you if you have one truck and you're a driver you're driving that truck and you're just listening for for things you know in your truck as you're driving and you think like something happens like i, I get a, a blown tire there is no way because like some of them had credit cards they maxed them out they had the loans like right now um even with in my company uh in a few days my uh, insurance is renewing so that's another big expense especially if you have a lot of trucks if you have you know more than two three four ten trucks you have usually have to put down a payment of 20 to 25 percent and that that that's thousands of dollars that you know uh, and for most companies for most carriers when they have that renewal insurance renewal that means that there's going to be a large down payment involved and even in good times that time of the year for them is bad because you have to have that money let alone in times like this you know um, something stop. as simple as a blown tire and it's if it yeah. happens on the road one blown tire it'll eat up your weekly profit how serious it is right just a yeah. blown tire 
Yeah. God forbid well, something happens with ten thousand dollar repair. That's that's a that's stress. That's a lot of stress. I, I Can remember I we make their money back. Well, when I was a tr truck driver for a company a uh, long time ago, and I sp it was during one of these. Uh, I think it was like two thousand eight when we had you know those couple of bad years. You know with with recession <clears throat> and um, home markets crashing and wall street the guy the owner told me like because i had a blown tire in that one week and one you know at that time it was like 300 dollars to pay for uh you know side uh, road roadside repair and he's he, like i'm coming back and he's like there goes my profit so like that his profit was supposed to be 300 dollars for that week and one blown tire just uh, <clears throat> deleted that profit you know how much is the tire right now to change it on the road <clears throat> side you know what uh the other day we had a guy he was an owner operator he had his own tire he had his own like he he had a, a flat tire i think it was on his trailer and he had his own tire like a spade, spare tire uh, on his truck and i i called the uh, or was it Amra? I don't. I don't remember. One of us called um, the roadside, roadside service, and they charged him. It was like four to five hundred dollars without a tire, no tire. You know, just to come out oh, and then change the tire. You know. Uh, but that, anyway, about that video. So I wanted. I wanted to talk about that. Uh, yeah, so a little bit. Where, where was I right? I was right uh, with small carriers. I predicted that there will be a lot of uh, small carriers shutting down uh, because uh, they they will need uh, um, capital, like uh, you know, um, money to run their business. They won't have any. Uh, they will try to get funds and loans, borrow money and they they will spend that money too and then they will go down <laughs> and that's that happened, exactly, to, me. That happened uh, to me personally according to what was the name of that website that i uh that does the um, statistics for trucking uh i looked it up this morning in 2023 like so last year eighty-eight thousand carriers shut down their doors 88,000 and uh, 8,000 8, brokers uh, shut down their doors in 2023. But what's interesting, there are not that many brokers as we think. You know, right now, there are anywhere between one and two million active uh, uh, carriers in the United States, between, between one and two million. That's a lot. That's and uh, there are only around 30,000 active brokers. Are they really? You know that? It kind of seems to me that they're they're popping up like left and right every day. I'm well, seeing names. I like this is what we have from FMCSA because uh, we we have a uh, I'm going to show you. I don't know. I don't think you saw this, but I'll, I'll show you that in a moment. We have a, a website where we sell uh, carrier databases you know brand new website and we have this list of, of active brokers and it's not more than thirty thousand. but imagine eight thousand brokers shutting down you know that's like a, a quarter like let's say there, there have been like forty thousand. you know it's it's a quarter yeah it's a I big percentage there are big companies right they're shutting down they're not like uh you know independent brokers that are shutting down those yeah, are all, big, big names. All kinds of brokers. This is this is one of those predictions where I was wrong about 2022 and 2023. I was wrong because I, I thought that since brokers don't have a lot of overhead expenses, okay. you know, they don't need they don't a lot of, going. they don't have equipment, they don't need buildings, you know, fuel, insurance, you know, they do have some kind of features like contingent cargo and, you know, maybe contingent liability, but that's not a lot. So I was wrong. I thought they were going to make it. But a lot of brokers shut down, including big ones. The smaller ones, maybe, you know, they, you know, they 
could have an advantage. They could, you know, you can even work from home, you know, yeah. just get a load here and there. But big brokers, you know, they, they invest in, in offices, in, in uh, um, new, new people, in technology. And uh, I also read that uh, a lot of brokers, like, for example, Uber is having trouble right now as well. I've read that. I've read that recently. Yep. I've read they're, that article. They're supposedly paying a lot of people uh, just to, to maintain, like, you know, the software, the technology that they run on. Those salaries that they pay them because, you know, these people make like uh, 100, 200, $200,000 a year. You know that's one of their their biggest expenses, just to cover the 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 tech people, and that that's what you know that's their problem. Yeah, they're, struggling. they're struggling. I've seen that they've increased the the payments. They used to pay, and you have it in your own videos. They used to pay like in a couple of days, right? You run the load, you submit the paperwork, and you're Uber, paid in yeah. forty eight hours. Now yeah. it takes up to uh, thirty days, like a regular payments. Oh, does it? They think that, yeah, they're trying to save up on some money. I don't know, maybe unpaid invoices, but you can see they're struggling for sure. I, I haven't worked with them in a while. I I kind of like them because that's one of the things. The same Conway did the same thing. They would pay you like in a couple of days, uh, with no fees. You know, like no no fees. Right. It, it, it's like you know, but. Uh, uh, with Uber, I, I like them because you can go online, you can find a load, you can book it, you can see everything. Uh, but what they have been doing uh, since the beginning is like th they're trying to uh, put two or three loads together and, and, and selling it to you as a bundle, you know. And most people don't like that. You know, you're, I'm not going to buy a bundle. I just want one load. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. No, so, man. Yeah. So, and so hey, uh, if you if uh, if you're watching this and you have any questions uh just ask us any questions uh, uh in in the chat here and we will we will uh, gladly try to answer them okay so if you have any questions uh, we are here and it's for 2024 my prediction is the fuel is finally going to actually normalize somewhere between you know 250 and 350 like in the national average i can see it going down i'm checking it every day we're discussing that with my drivers, and I think that things will change. Things will change regarding that in 2023. Cheaper trucks, that's another thing. I've been checking Craigslist, and you know, there's used equipment for like between thirty and fifty thousand dollars for a used truck, but you know, in a decent condition. You know, with yourself, a year and a half ago, those trucks were going up to you know a hundred thousand dollars. That's a huge difference. And yeah. that justifies actually your prediction for 2022 and 2023, right? Smaller carriers going out of business. Going That's what's of, happening and yeah. reflecting right here. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the prices for equipment uh, had been inflated a lot. And uh, a lot of people made a lot of money and, uh, you know, sold some equipment for, for really high prices. And we didn't see that coming. And then... In a year after that, everything started going down. So now you have these people who who bought, uh, let's say, trucks for like 120,000, like with a couple of hundred thousand miles on them, and now their trucks are worth like 60 or 70 thousand uh, dollars because it went down. And then just one one more thing, uh, I about the predictions video, I predicted that owner operators are going, going to start dispatching themselves. So that was, I was right, because they were trying to save on costs. Uh, and uh, it was everyone, like all dispatchers have been complaining how, you know, all the operator don't want to work with them. And that, you know, I was right about that. So we are seeing a lot of that. We are seeing a lot of that. Yeah. And yeah, our advantage as dispatchers, that's a good thing. And it's, it's way better to work with a driver who has been doing that himself who's gone through the struggle of booking a load because people that have not been dispatching themselves they think it's just one phone call on the load boards and their truck is covered for the next two days it's not it's not and i strongly encourage actually people to try and dispatch themselves and even if they decide you know to work with a dispatcher you get a more respect as a dispatcher they'll actually value your time yeah i've had yeah. i've had people i've had people different kind of people you know this year has been it's been a ride it's been a ride for sure yeah. and i've seen but, both sides 
there, there was this one company that, where I worked. Uh, they they wanted everyone to not know everything, but like work for a few days before when they start. You know, so if if you're a driver, you're gonna work for a few days in in the warehouse. You know, and 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 stuff like that. So with us, it helps me that I had been driving and and uh, I can see how drivers feel. But then, like you said, it would also be great if uh, drivers were to dispatch and and see, you know, like it's driving is still harder, much much harder. Oh, for uh, sure. But dispatching is not easy either. It's a okay. different side of harder. You know, it's a different side of harder. Yeah, uh, it's, there's a lot of stress, <clears throat> a lot of stress and pressure. <clears throat> I can mention names. Uh, we have it under 3B Logistics, Zach. Yeah. He started brand new MC and he started dispatching himself. Brand new MC, right? Uh, one truck, zero inspections. He's seen it all. He's seen it all. And it's he. I, I'm getting nothing but respect from that guy. I swear to God, 100%. He knows what I'm doing. He knows the struggle behind it. You know, he knows where he's come through to um, i mean he's at a good point right now he's 18 year 18 months uh mc one inspection you know now it's it's a different thing but he started with the rough pad and you know that's something yeah. that everybody well, has to go he he worked uh you know before you with a dispatcher that you know he didn't like you know he didn't like no, working even with him. before that even before, oh, before that, that. When he started yeah he was doing it on himself he told me he oh, was telling me that okay. Okay. at a truck stop, you know, for like three, four, five days at a time. Yeah. Not not be able to get one load for myself. Now try imagine imagine dispatching five people like that, right? It's yeah. tough. Yeah. It's tough. Okay. Hey, so you mentioned fuel. Now I, I wanted to add to that. The the problem with fuel is uh, that every time we have a uh, fuel price increases, uh, brokers are not catching up immediately to that with their rates or shippers. Uh, it takes them a while. Uh, once the fuel goes down, they don't have problems catching up. But what my, what my fear right now is like, if the fuel prices continue going down, um, I don't think, you know, the rates can go any lower. I mean, they can, but I don't think they will. But they can stay the same. That's the problem. Then you know their uh, brokers and shippers' argument will be, "Hey, well, the fuel is down and the rates are same, so now you at least have some profit." I just don't want that to happen. That's the problem because when I see everyone talking about uh, two dollars per mile as a standard rate, that's <laughs> you know that's it's, it's, it's been that's normalized survival. in last year or two that rate has been normalized it's it's normal now i made a video two years ago uh with uh, saying we need five dollars per mile and you know people oh, laughed at me people like hey well it's the markets well i yes i know it's the markets but in order to be profitable you need five dollars per mile then two years ago what about now it has to be even more oh man that's I hope to God that those rates won't stay the same, even if fuel goes down. And you're a hundred percent right. When when fuel increases, they do not see that. They do not have the info ready, you know. But as soon as it starts to go down, they take it as an advantage, you know. Come on, man, you know, fuel is down. You know, this is a good rate. Yeah. Who are you dying to? And when you uh, and also you mentioned tr uh, uh, trucks, the trucks truck prices. And trailer prices went down that that is a fact uh they didn't go i mean like if you go to a dealer right now to buy equipment uh it might be a little bit cheaper than what it used to be uh, uh last year but the thing is they don't want to negotiate one dollar you ask them to go down they're not gonna go down at all nothing uh, if you buy private then you you might be able to negotiate and that's where you can probably get uh, the equipment cheaper because a lot of like we said a lot of carriers are going out of business or retiring they just want to get rid of that uh, equipment and they're just gonna go down like even five or ten thousand dollars if if they have to uh 
so used trucks uh three to five years old you can buy them right now for a decent price uh glider kit trucks are still holding their value i had this one glider uh, kit a uh, freightliner coronado and i looked it up the other day uh because i sold that one like three or four months ago it's still holding that price yeah uh, but like freightliner cascadias and volvos that were built uh between two and five years ago um they have a lot of electronics they uh, they still have a uh, uh, def and dpf problems and now if these trucks are cheaper the problem is that maintenance is twice as much for example two years ago an hour at a volvo service for a semi truck you were charged 120 125 dollars per hour now both Freightliner and, and, and Volvo is between $220 and $240 around that mark per hour. So imagine you buy this truck, like one of our drivers, and you, you know him, you, 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 you uh, found a couple of loads for him the other day. Yeah, yeah. He, he just bought this Cascadia and it was $55,000. Uh, it had like 400,000 miles on it, uh, 2019, I believe. Man! I told you about him like he like the fuel to to change the oil is over 600 almost 700 dollars for uh, uh diagnostics which is an hour and it's like 100 150 dollars you know they charge him like 600 dollars just for diagnostics it's crazy so you get this cheaper truck but once it comes to maintaining every time you go to a shop it's not gonna be not even thousand maybe a couple of thousand dollars at least so i that, knew that there was the a problem. twist that's the problem and here it is you know you buy a truck you know let's say you buy a truck for fifty five thousand dollars your payment is maybe around a thousand to twelve hundred a, a month so it's not two or three thousand as like if you buy a brand new truck but still at, at around five hundred thousand miles everything is starting to break down and these expenses of these newer trucks are two or three times higher as opposed to, to like parts that you have on on these older trucks so that's the problem even if they're cheaper the main you know maintenance is just crazy so now you made, really a clear point. you made a clear point what do you think about trailers Dennis, though? trailers uh i didn't like it's been a while maybe a month or more you know since i looked up trailer values so i'm not uh up to date but i see uh and again owner operators you know, they're selling trailers uh, reefers vans flatbeds uh, if you go to facebook uh, marketplace or craigslist uh, you can find uh, a, a lot of uh, and, and even if they uh, ask for like thirty thousand, i'm sure a lot of them will go down to like 25 or so uh for a trailer or, or or even less for a good trailer though right yeah i mean yeah for a good trail you know like five five years old six years old trailers like you know only if you go to gm they will ask for a trailer younger than 10 uh years but there is not a lot of maintenance on the trailer all it has right. is tires and brakes brake chambers uh, or and then if you you know if you damage it then you know that's an expense but trailers hold value they traditionally always uh, held value uh, do you know what happened off topic right here i emailed this broker three hours ago for a load coming out of pennsylvania going to jacksonville florida they were having it posted for 2200 and i was asking for 25 and the guy just replied back to me like seven minutes ago 26 hundred for this load yeah but those so, are the covered. this this morning i booked a load for um for my brother uh it was with jb hunt they were asking 17 1700 from here to uh, geneva new york okay. it's like it's like 600 miles something we're asking okay. for 17 the 
the lowest offer that was in there was uh, like 28 someone was asking for 28 <laughs> which they just reject you know like it's not there's not but then i asked them for 24 and they said 1850 you know they went from 1720 to 1850 right away usually jb hunt does like 20 dollars increments right like 20 or 40 when you bid but they went 100 more than 100 dollars so i said 23 they said 1950 i said 22 two, and they gave me the load for uh 21 you know oh, wow. which is which and, and and it's for tomorrow it's not even for today so i was surprised you know like that jb hunt would do that and it's, i don't want to jinx it but starting this year we're we are going into the fifth week of this year right yeah for best we're going into the fifth week it hasn't happened to me to cover my trucks it happened to me this year like this is the third time that i have my trucks covered for today and i'm just looking for tomorrow that's a good sign and they're going for a decent rates they're not hauling cheap freight you know i don't yeah. know i don't want to jinx it but it's good it's a slight improvement yeah it's it's you know as long as we uh have available loads for decent rate that you can like you can pick from you can choose from those loads it's not like there's only there are bad right. loads and then everyone is waiting for that good load and once it pops out everyone is calling it everyone is fighting for that load and it goes away in, in seconds as long as we have few options decent options yeah. the board then you can it gives you more leverage to negotiate this situation right here is offering me 26 now three hours later so the load has been staying on the board for over four hours they had it posted early this morning i checked it and it's a broker that we're set up so i called the office i emailed them they wouldn't do any better and now they're willing to do 26 a hundred bucks more than i even asked for so you know huh there are like trucks right there yeah okay well hey uh you want to answer some questions what is it let me check them out actually i don't courses did you go over them uh i i i've been looking at them you know while we were talking uh, but we didn't answer any uh um t harris is saying let's hope the best year just started yes and then i dispatch uh 24 cent what's up on ups wanting to sell coyote uh well they uh <laughs> they bought them it, it hasn't been i don't know, like how many years since they bought um coyote and everything went together because be, even be, even even before uh, ups bought coyote they were doing um mail uh, together coyote would always at the end of the year they would have uh, have these uh, mail uh you know post mail loads and uh, they call it i can't remember the name like they have a specific name for that if someone knows go ahead they have a specific name for that season and a lot of people from coyote would actually go to ups uh and and cover those loads and work on those loads because a lot of carriers would would uh um they would take one or two or five routes and that's all they would do during you know like december and, and january so okay. and then finally ups decided to buy coyote uh, but right now everyone is like it seems that everyone wants to uh, <laughs> close offices lay off their employees save money a lot of brokers are doing this so i'm, I'm assuming ups is doing the same somebody says well, hopefully uber goes under and that'll make rates increase that's just my prediction yeah everybody was hoping that conway will make a change but in fact it actually didn't they just you know those contracted rates they just transferred through carriers and that's it nothing was left on the spot market so yeah i don't think it'll make a change even if they go down well when, sure they uh, won't. they're huge they'll figure it out when uh um when conway went down uh landstar uh one of their I don't know if that was a president or vice president or who, who was it. They send an email to everyone saying, hey, Conway's down. Let's get the, the freight. 
and you know a lot of brokers just jumped on those lanes you know just landstar and they just took over those lanes so even if uber goes down other brokers they're probably just gonna take over you know nothing's gonna change i don't no. think that uber is gonna go down they're way too big to not figure this thing out to be honest well i don't know if they're even profitable and a lot of these companies they can go without a profit you know they can yeah. just inject money if they have the funds if they have uh, uh, investors uh but for me but when i heard that uber was going into trucking i, I thought that they, at the beginning that was a very stupid idea you know why Be it just didn't make sense because uber was this revolutionary company that changed like throughout the world they changed everything you know like uber hey call uber that that's a, and it's working and it's working you know like they're making money everyone likes it it's it's affordable and now they're jumping into something that you know like they have no idea tracking is is totally different than what they're doing i thought to me it didn't make sense I'm sure they hired a bunch of professionals, you know, in the industry to point them in the right direction, but they got pretty good tech, right? You were personally satisfied by that. Yeah. Just yeah. See the I was okay with Uber, yeah. Right? Yeah. But it's but the thing is, player, but look, look yeah, at man. look at UPS, look at Coyote, look at CH Robinson, TQL, JB Hunt, Schneider, all these big brokers that have experience, have actual experience. <clears throat> most of them have uh, uh, uh their own assets like ch robinson doesn't have their own trucks but jb hunt yeah. does schneider does uh they some of them have been in trucking before they went went into brokerage all right or now they have both but these tech companies they're like you know coming I from a different industry without any experience and it shows now you know yeah. it's like everyone can be profitable when we have good times when you have good markets everyone is making money everyone is happy you know anyone can book a load you just go to a load board and they will they will call you and give you a load exactly and now now it shows who like who, who has the most experience uh who knows the industry and and who knows how to survive that's what's showing right now and and convoy and and uber they're not showing it so i don't know you'll see okay next one <clears throat> uh what about amazon relay for power only you have any experience with that i do not Anis. i used to have uh i used to have a driver that were covering himself meanwhile you know covering the gaps with uh with amazon but i really never had an access to his account or book shipments under it so i have no idea honestly okay well i have i i uh I tried doing that with my uh, trucks, and that was in 2020. But I didn't like it because most of my trucks were owner operators, and they didn't like they had their own trailers, and they didn't like they didn't want to use someone else's trailer to do power only. And for them, like they, you know how most owner operators are, they want to know where they are going, when the load is deliver delivering. You know, they want decent pickup and delivery times. With Amazon, it's all over. You know, with Amazon, you have to have a different mind, uh, and a lot that. of owner owner operators don't like that. Uh, Amazon has been great for for people who owner for owner operators who don't want to buy their own trailers. They don't want to invest right. in them. Uh, they want constant freight, um, and uh, I didn't like it. I have had a lot of drivers reaching out to me asking me to dispatch them, and they come from Amazon. You know then i tell them well you know you have to buy your own trailer or lease it or we can do power only but it's going to be tough um on the way like oh man well i have to find a trailer like to pay monthly rent like which can be around thousand dollars a month right now and uh or, or i have to buy a trailer i have to maintain it and i asked them here well how much are you making with amazon right now i just had a guy the other day call me from Baden harbor i spoke to him a while ago too and he's like well after everything my profit is around like three thousand a week and i tell him well you know just stay there just stay there right? 
Yeah. I was gonna say. I mean, you're not gonna change anything. You know, it it you might get three thousand after everything, you might get more, but it's going to be here and there, like it's not, not gonna be stable. Yeah, consistent. Just stay there. Just if, if you can make three thousand dollars after everything, you're good. That's pretty solid, actually. <laughs> That's yeah. pretty solid. I don't know how much he's running. I don't know like where he's running, but like I don't know. I think I think that, that had I think that had a huge impact on people who I don't know myself. I didn't even know about the trucking industry in 2015. But I was recently watching a video, a young dude actually at 17 years old. In 2015, he bought two trucks. And all he did was uh, Amazon shipments in 2015. Uh, loads used to pay a lot at that point. And he was able to grow in a couple of years until to, until 2017 up to like, uh, I believe he said 30 or 35 trucks in two years. In 2021, he went up to 500 trucks. How big is that? And he was telling the story behind Amazon, actually, before everybody and their mothers jump into it, you know, there were some money to be made. And from 2015 up until 2019, he made a bunch of money. And now he has sold like over 70% of the fleet. He's at 50 trucks, which is still a pretty decent company. But, you know, you can see that things changed for sure. Well, like I said, in good times, I'm not gonna say it's easy, but it's much easier to grow easier. and, and be profitable. Easy. A lot of insurance companies don't like that grow. That's that grow is not healthy, you know. Yeah, uh, it's just in, in any company, especially tracking business, like if you're doing some something online, you're selling something online, and you go from here to here, like in, in that's okay, you know, because you it, it, there is not like the investments are lower liability is lower way less overhead way less overhead yeah. but in tracking if you go like this that, that's not good like uh, tracking is uh, like slowly gradually go up but try to imagine this Dennis. try to imagine this he went up to a point with 500 trucks up until 2021 right and yeah. that's when things went south up until this point when we we're talking actually at this moment right yeah he went from 500 trucks down to 50. that's the unnatural growth that's the yeah. consequence yeah yeah so sure he made a bunch of money on that equipment but still you know yeah. it's not but an easy plus to do the problem with these videos on youtube i i've seen some videos where they and it's usually a channel that doesn't do tracking they, like they do all kinds of things like documentaries and or, or like success stories and they will feature one of these uh guys like it's always a young guy um or, or, or a girl that uh like was able to grow in, in like they had two million revenue in, in 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 a year well yeah but like there are like out of the, that two revenue 90 percent of that was expenses <laughs> Most <Yeah. probably. laughs> you know they don't say that so it's, no, it's kind of it's true. misleading you know and then people see that like oh yeah i want to do that okay well maybe this guy was profitable you know maybe this guy is doing great but what makes you think that you're gonna be that guy it's like one out of thousand or hundred thousand that's why he's special that's why he's on tv because he's special most people are not <laughs> <laughs> that's true that's true <laughs> you know it's like a lot of a lot of misleading stories Let, let's go to uh next uh comment somebody doesn't need a dispatch or factory which is awesome if you can actually yeah. afford them all the know. power to you you know the, all the power to you that's great and I, I would maybe do the same thing all right but like some people will need a dispatcher like if they don't speak english uh they are not good with uh negotiation or they don't like talking to people on the phone things like that you know like a lot of like i do my own maintenance at my home i do plumbing uh, electricity uh, carpeting everything but some people will like all my neighbors like you can see the the vans in, in the front of their houses like like you know so on point so simple so simple and so on point plus you have to be outgoing if you do not want to talk to people which many people do not want to deal with people you know they'll just hire somebody and that's it maybe this guy is one yeah. of them you know 
Yeah, some Which people do awesome. their own taxes. You know, like I would, right. like if, I, right. if I didn't have a business, if I was just to do my personal taxes, that's easy. I would do it myself. But most people, you know, will pay we'll someone. Pay to do it. So. <laughs> okay, uh, next. Why do people think that this is easy, man? I hope they're always trying to find the, the easiest way of how to do this. There is no easy way. There, there is no easy but way. there is no easy job. There is no everything. There is no easy job. Imagine you're just sitting somewhere for eight hours. Just sitting there is gonna make you tired. Not doing anything. You know, no job is easy. Okay. Uh, I heard it's the easiest option for a dispatcher. I mean, book loads, RPM. Yeah. Um, maybe you lost thousands. Who knows? Came out. <laughs> oh, good sad. Dragon, Dragon is in our group uh, in Dispatch Insider. <laughs> I like this guy. For some reason, I like this guy. Yeah, Tesfa. Hey, Tesfa. How are you? Yes. Hi. I told him that we're gonna tune in. Oh, you did. He's been motivating me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah He's been there you go. Okay, Elias Adventures. Do you guys use Load Link? Do you recommend for beginners or using uh, DAT is fine. I have been using DAT only uh, because you know we don't have that many trucks. If I had like 50 trucks, I would use something else uh, as a backup, but I really don't need anything for DAT board and, and brokers um, load boards. Everything is on DAT and it's, we've tried them all, right? Everything is on DAT and they're most updated. That's they, it. I can't even remember the names of these load boards that we used to have. What was that like? You you don't th this load was uh, popular like twenty years ago or fifteen years ago. You don't know that. I can't remember the name of that load board, you know. But they all come and go. DAT is the only one that uh, that stays. They're huge and they're gonna be there for a while. Yeah. Load link. I believe that load link is uh, that usually works with Canada shipments, right? They're going into yeah. the United States. Yeah, yeah they I have think. a Canada website, but like I, I've been, I've been hearing about load link a lot lately. Uh, but you know, if you work in Canada, then there you go. It could make sense. Okay. Uh, uh, dispatchers. <laughs> I hope I can hope one day and share new idea on how I pulled six gears as a new dispatcher seven years ago. Yeah, it was much easier then. Uh, sorry for joining late. So what's prediction with market for this year comparing with last year? I don't think we even spoke about it. What's the prediction? <laughs> yes, what is yeah, I, really, I really, really think that there will be slight improvements. And it's like I mentioned, this, this past uh, month, January, it's been a little bit better really really small difference but there is a difference i really think that we're gonna see we're not gonna see those covid rates for sure but there will be improvement on top of that if fuel goes down we can maybe you know all make some money in 2024 so, so most likely uh, uh after spring after winter and spring that uh, hopefully we're gonna see uh, some rate improvements where at least we can be um, we can have some profit because right now everyone is at a loss. There is really no profit. Everyone is happy, even if they're just like a, at a zero. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but most likely in summer, because there's really, uh, it, it's been two years and everyone is tired of it. And there's this like, have you heard of this uh, trucking convoy that's going towards Texas? Like it's all over news last couple of days. Have you heard of it? I have not. They're throwing around numbers like thousands of, of trucking uh, carriers are protesting, but they're not protesting the current conditions. It has to do with the Texas uh, uh, border, U.S.-Mexico border. So that's why they're doing that. I mean, if, tru if truckers were maybe a, a little bit more, um, you know, like as far as the rate go goes and... and uh, the costs if we were all sticking together and protesting that maybe maybe we would see something but they they are doing this for a totally different reason you know right, right. this protest so i don't know let's see next question 
Has anyone Person. used the CAP, FMCS, uh, AS corrective action plans? No, I haven't used them. If if someone has has used them here, uh, uh, like go ahead and uh, answer the question. I just I, I didn't. That has to do with uh, uh, drug screening, you know, and clear, clearing house. Okay. A lot of non English. Uh, and and also the the SMS uh, uh, records. Uh, so that's um, usually the SMS records. They will expire after two years. So if you get a uh, an inspection and a violation on your record uh, with FMCSA, uh, it usually that that those violations uh, delete themselves after two years. So that's that's what I was doing. You know, what I was doing is if if I have uh, if I had uh, uh, some uh, violations on my record in my trucking company, I would ask drivers always to um, you know make sure their equipment is uh, uh, maintained, uh, make sure they're running legally, and if they get pulled over, so that that way they're gonna get a, a good uh, inspections with with zero violations. In the meantime, the ones that are older than two years. They uh, usually automatically go away, and FMCSA doesn't count in uh, those inspections anymore. Uh, using that formula, you know, when, when they come up with your FMCSA scores, so everything that that's that's there from here until two years ago, they use a formula like how many inspections you had, uh, how many violations, the the weight of each, because each violation carries different weight, and they have formulas where, where they, um, you know multiply and divide by each other whatever they do and then they come up with your scores okay so the more the more inspections you have with zero violations or small violations the better the score is so once those violations with bad uh, uh, violations uh, expire after two years they don't count them anymore they don't uh, account them into that formula okay okay makes sense so for me, that's what I did. You know, I, I would just let it expire. Uh, you know, at the I'm beginning, sure it is... go ahead. I'm not sure what is Ogi Depspotovic. Is he an owner operator or if he's a dispatcher? Uh, he was asking us earlier. I we didn't say anything about that. He was asking if if, if we go to Albany, Syracuse. Yes, sorry, I I um, oh, skipped yeah, that the question. Was... Yeah, yeah, yeah. My trucks go there. Yes. My truck's done. No? No, nah. nah, nobody wants to go there. There are good loads paying to go in there, but I don't know. It's just maybe during the winter. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, a lot of non-English speaking people follow your channel and like the content. I guess we do our best to understand. Hey, my English is not like on, on some days, like it just flows. On some days, like oh, today, I feel you. <laughs> I feel some you days, there. I, like today, I, I can't even say a word. You know, it just doesn't. Like my brain is not following my my mouth. <laughs> no. Um, I... Yeah, most of the viewers on this channel are from uh, outside of United States, which is really uh, cool. Um, we have uh, India, Pakistan, Moldavia, Ukraine, Russia, uh, ba Balkans. You know, Serbia, Bosnia and uh africa also a lot of uh, countries from africa Canada. i have over 32 000, 32k this month on 11. uh yeah I'm watching it good. so that's nice. that's around three dollars per mile so 11 uh, thousand miles that's like 2500 a week yeah, depends how how hard you run. Depends where you go. Depends how long you stay out. Some drivers want to stay out four or five days. Some drivers don't mind driving for six days. Uh, de depends what kind of equipment you have—a drive in or a reef or uh, where you want to go. If you avoid East Coast, you're gonna miss on a you know on a pretty decent loads actually coming out of there. Especially I've seen lanes Chicago going to the East Coast. I put Z1 on my DAD search, and that's New York and Pennsylvania. Yeah. There are decent loads going in, but you have to be willing to do those loads. Many people, like oh, I yeah. said, a lot of my drivers are going there, so I have to move them Midwest to the south and come back. And yeah. like you said, some people just want to run 
you know some people don't and that's okay when i was going when i was driving and going to east coast i i went everywhere i the only thing that i didn't go to was a new york city and uh obvious um, reasons <laughs> yeah and and i speak to a lot of drivers who actually go there and it's not that bad you know like you you have the truck routes uh once you go to to like one company and and a lot of people will do uh, dedicated then they know like next time when they go they know where they're gonna go to but when i first started driving a semi truck that was in i think 2005 or 2006 and I, and I had some friends who who used to go to east coast at that time and east coast at that time was paying really good it was a lot like people made fortunes going to east coast and coming back to michigan but then other even the lane coming back to michigan even the lanes coming back to michigan because you know fuel was cheap maintenance right. was cheap everything was cheap you know uh, and i heard a lot of horror stories uh, from these people like when they go to east coast oh there was a low bridge there i couldn't i couldn't go there the streets are so tight a lot of feels uh, it's crazy and they scared me and i only ran texas and back from michigan like i went down to texas or louisiana uh, later i went to california as well and came back but i would never go to east coast there is no way like past toledo ohio no 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 no, no. i'm not gonna go there like and then i started going there and i loved it you know i, I went there after that I, I i went to east coast and back for six years driving back and forth for six years and i loved it but you know i was late i i, I didn't make that much money like those guys before me you know in like in 2006 and yeah. seven but imagine being a new driver and he's going through those bridges and you know that traffic madness over there i've had a guy in chicago that damaged the roof of the truck like severely really bad really bad he had to come back to dallas empty to fix that huge hole he made because he only simply missed one sign you know yeah. you have to be there and you have to have the experience to go to places like that i don't blame people who don't want to go there honestly yeah well chicago is infamous for those uh you oh, know man. those low bridges uh hey the other day i was driving i was um uh, in detroit and i'm i'm looking at this company and i see a railroad on, on google uh satellite and i see it's a bridge and i'm like i'm not i'm just gonna go around so i go around and i i'm about to turn left and i see a 13 2 bridge like a sign it says 13 2 and I 13 6 the truck is 13 6 so I'm about to go into that street and that's the only street I can go to that I can see to that company and I'm like I don't see that bridge like I see the sign but there is no bridge and then I look at my maps the bridge is like half half a mile down the road and I'm like yeah I think my the company that I'm going to is before the bridge you know and I just took a chance, and th that's what happened. You know, actually, the, was, the it, was, was it the company? Yeah, yeah, it was. Okay, but okay. but like you know, you just have to be careful and, and plan okay. your route. You know, some people, I don't know. <laughs> I don't it's know the experience, and this is the experience that comes in play for sure, for sure. Yeah. Uh, anyway, next question: uh, Is DAT going to be good for me to use as a dispatcher in Canada? uh i see some loads uh in canada on the at board but i i don't see that many that's that's the problem that's the problem with uh with that also i since we don't go to canada i mean there is an option where you can turn off the loads for canada uh, yeah, i was gonna say that i don't even see them so in the settings but if you can use both i would i would advise to 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 you know use both uh congratulations on thirty thousand subscribers thank you very much we hit it finally <laughs> it's just a number it doesn't really mean anything uh but like it's kind of around like i've been like since since i went to twenty nine thousand, i was like okay well it's gonna be thirty thousand soon and it took more than a month uh to thirty thousand. like you know, i just want to see that number and now man thirty thousand is a serious number and it's for real it's, it's, it's a, a serious cool. number, man. yeah i it's crazy man it's just crazy 
Um, hey, look at me, man. I've learned from you. And we're doing this live together. How awesome is that? I learned from, from this that, channel. So that's right? so that's so cool, you know. And there was a two actually last week or so I had two people reach out to me. One of them is from Serbia. And uh he told me like I watched every one of your videos. That's all there was on my on my on my TV, and I wrote down everything, same as you did. And now he's dispatching. Uh, How awesome is that? He's saying like my my wife started calling me, and it's because I was. <laughs> and there was another guy, as well. You know that, and I I tell everyone like, hey, uh, like, should I buy a course? Well sure why not it's an organized way of learning you know you can you can go there whenever you need whenever you have time you have support but if you if you don't want to pay or or you can't i have 380 videos 80 to 90 percent of, of the things that you need are there if you have a question you can email me if it's like a simple you know question I'll answer it. Also different now. You have this dispatch insider, right? People that haven't dispatched can ask actually questions and get answers for people who have experience, right? For we example, a... when I started 10 years ago, but when I started, I didn't bother you much. And I didn't think that even oh, you... I reached no. out for an issue, right? I well, no. everything. It, it would, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't consider it bothering either, Like, but you didn't reach out to me. And this this was our idea, and it's a free group. It's Google Space. This idea is awesome. This idea yeah. is so helpful. It's crazy. It, it, it's a great group. And uh, yesterday we made an announcement too on, on, on the YouTube channel. Uh, it, it was kind of low key. Um, it's for dispatchers who are currently dispatching or, or they may have a truck or two, but they like, it's it's been really hard to start a company in the United States and get a DAT board subscription, and you have to have a, a US debit card or credit card to pay for DAT. It's been harder and harder. And now I made an announcement yesterday. We already have like four or five people that actually uh, inquired. I have to call them later. Uh, if if uh, you're a dispatcher then you can work with us the payments go can go through us we can provide you with everything you know like you don't have to have your own company here uh even uh, uh dat but after a trial period you know maybe we could even get you the dat board subscription and the phone number but it has everything has to go through us through our company you know the payments from from the carriers and all that and then uh, we can share that. That's another prediction for 2024. I think it, it's going to be even tougher on dispatchers in the future. Not just 2024, but as time passes, like 2025, 2026, I think things will start to tighten up. They've been out of control, and it's they've been out of control. Let's be honest. Let's be real, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. This is not a joke to get into it. Like a, you know what I mean. You know what I, I mean know. completely. This I know. service that you just said right here. Oh man, that's huge. That's huge help for somebody who is willing to to get into this, like you know, yeah, all in, like I said. I, I also I was thinking, you know, like I'm just this is not something that that's happening, but why not uh, get together with like ten people or or more or whatever, and try to um, train them, try to train them and say hey you know like you have to work for us maybe for a year and you know go ahead and then you know find business to, and we'll we'll set up everything set up cares things like that why not you know but the problem is right now that they're like it's hard to find drivers the loads are not paying that great so whatever you start right now in in trucking in dispatching it's going to be tough, you know, until the markets become better. Anything you start right now is, is going to be tough. You just have to try to survive. 
Do you have anything in the comments right here? Please scare uh, yourself on the OTFMCS and insurance wallet. Use caps to lower it. Do yours DOT offers us will stop you. So load link uh load board is a good one for intra Canada, but it's not cheap. And as far as I know, you cannot get it as a dispatcher. So signing up a key and requesting login pass is the only option. Okay, well, thank you for that. I'm not familiar with Canada at all. Uh, can beginner make 8,000 miles every month? Uh, and that was a uh, yeah. question at Ogi, but yeah, of course you can. You can make that. That's actually, yeah, that's comfortable weeks, 2,000 miles, right? Yeah, 2,000 I mean, miles. That's, yeah, that, that's like if, if you're if you're driving five days a week, that's 400 miles each day. That's that's Indeed. nothing. Yeah. Uh, did not know I need use debit or uh, for DAT. Uh, the problem right now, and they have they've had that rule for several months right now. They will not let you sign up and pay for their services with a debit or credit card that's not based in United States. So you're uh, if you're a dispatcher living someplace else. Uh, on top of having to have your own LLC registered in United States uh, to get access to DAT, on top of LLC, you have to have your own uh, debit card based out of United States with an address in United States. Otherwise, uh, DAT board, they will not let you sign up as a dispatcher. Uh, Please, Curious, stop feeding the TFMCS interest wallet. Use CAPs to lower your safety score. Put the pump and do it. Uh, well, the scores are our are, are topic for, for itself. That's a really broad topic. Uh, and you're probably right. I dispatch 24 7, but it's <laughs> we will have to dedicate a whole show for that. Great, you see. Okay, so those were all the questions. Hey, I want to show you something. And everyone else. So I'm going to go to the website. So Emro and I, uh, we are, uh, you know how, I'm going to share my screen. You know how we have downloads on Never Stop Tracking, Chris? Yeah, yeah. So, I'm gonna share it. Okay. So, if you go to uh, uh, never stop uh, truck.in, you go to downloads here. And we have the a lot of these uh, things here. But look at this now. Uh, here are data one stop shop for everything you need. Here are your databases. So, uh, we have uh, databases for carriers, brokers, and shippers. Okay. Uh, we have a new MC numbers by month, uh, downloads and templates and, and documents for dispatching business effort and for tracking business. Okay. So these are uh, the collections. Okay. So if let's say we go to uh, these transportation databases. Uh, we have like these are sorted, and you know some of them have emails, some of them both, some of them have just phone numbers. Six thousand contacts, twenty nine hundred. This is for shipper. Uh, this is a twenty nine hundred shipping companies database. Um, motor carrier leads, uh, and then if you go for like this is for the dispatching business templates. PDF documents, the ebook for the uh, uh, like a dispatching course ebook that Emre and I wrote, calling scripts, a lot of things, a lot of things here. So I'll be honest, uh, I haven't opened this website in like at least at least one month. What was that? I haven't opened this website at least in one month. Oh, the one never stop done with Emre. Oh Which man. One? Which one? Yeah, I'm looking at these downloads that you're just uh, telling about. Oh, if somebody well, wants to sell their new. trailer, there's a template. <laughs> yeah, the killer database is new. It's uh, uh, we, we have a lot of dispatchers asking for databases. 
and and we gather them and uh, put them together and sort them out it's a lot of work you know it, it's it's a lot of work yeah wow okay all right well uh chris it's it's we've been on for over an hour if you if you want to do another question and then we can uh kind uh slowly uh close I mean, it up would i don't know i do not have any specific question or something like that i need i really need to call zach to check on that ELD stuff okay actually i don't he's active now we should have wow, called him he's almost there okay yeah, love it he just lost connection yeah for a uh, couple Tess, of hours now. <laughs> Tess is saying great to see you guys uh what is the hardest yes part thanks for tuning in to start as a dispatcher using your own authority uh chris you want to answer that this part to start as a dispatcher using your authority uh if you're brand new other than that you just keep that phone like you know make a hundred of phone calls every day ask for rates ask for lanes one other thing i wanted to mention is uh, this market uh market conditions on dat when you open it up and it gives uh -huh. you like the you can actually select a week ago three days ago of the current market whatever the thing is uh it's not that accurate for example let's say you're sending a truck in memphis area right and it's showing up red on the i i don't know i cannot uh, share my screen to show this up but i can share can, mine can hmm? i can share mine yeah just open up uh market conditions on the at where it shows you know red areas green areas yellow areas something like that okay yeah you can select that like let's go prior business day for example uh prior business day it, well, it's it already there up. it is set up on press yeah. because if you go to memphis you can see that it's marked as a red right right that's not so true if you can see there there are uh three thousand nine hundred loads posted and 400 available trucks that's not the case for example tql they're posting one load 15 different uh postings right that counts right, right here and it's not just right. tql it's every other broker that has been doing that in fact if you want to check a market area where you're going to send your truck you open up an actual search out of there for the current day and for the next day call on some loads you don't even have to have a truck right there you know call on some loads and see what people are willing to pay on those lanes that's your that's your market yeah. condition you know well, you can that's see right thing. here too like uh, if you go to a load and uh expand the quick rate know, search the spot rate they they have uh, uh the rates and then also uh where was this uh, like if you uh if you sort them by rate well this one like this lane is like it's very uh specific so there are not that many trucks but if you yeah, open it up with that the thing with that is exactly the same like you mentioned with the fuel prices and it's when when fuel are going up when the fuel is going up brokers act like they do not have this info if that lane pays 250 they act like they do not see it you know they act on the current market how many trucks are there yeah what yeah. i would also suggest is search for trucks you know see how many trucks are actually being posted out of that area that's well, how you're gonna get a better picture of how much you can get on that lane yeah this on, that average i don't know on I your on your dat board can you can you actually search for trucks i can you I can because on this one you can too do you still have this old version oh yeah the, the dat power you, you want I to click it here see. don't click here <laughs> don't click like here try the new platform today don't click there no 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 no, no thank you no. <laughs> well no, i i, this one, this I one think i can still go 
I think I could still go back even if I click on it, you know, it will let me go back, but I just don't want to risk it. <laughs> I don't either. I don't either. I, I haven't clicked so far. <laughs> okay. Uh, I dispatched 24, so I'm sorry, Ennis. I'm sorry. I'm you're not annoying. You know, that that's good. Like if you if you have anything to share here, that's that's totally fine. Uh, Rush is your uh, your uh, brother from Macedonia. Okay. Hi, Rosh. Should He's been a dispatching uh, driver in a good laptop. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Having a laptop as a driver is it's it's crucial. You cannot do as I mean, you could do a setup on a phone, but it's just a struggle. Laptop yeah, is yeah. way better. Yeah, bro uh, broker setup. Uh, what's this? Timeout. Broker setup and and, and other things. It's much much easier to work on a laptop. And right now, laptops are not that yeah. uh, expensive you can also you don't even have to have internet you can just uh connect it to your hotspot on your uh, on your cell phone so like when you're working on on, on the laptop <laughs> can i be profitable working only in the state of wisconsin and illinois yeah why not local runs yeah wisconsin actually southern is wisconsin and and northern illinois you know chicago area and rockford um what's that um milwaukee uh, no like uh oh, southwest southwest of chicago what's the name of the city uh joliet you know, okay. those areas man those are good areas you can make some money uh in, in those areas why not Okay. in between right here this is not for local but in between right here uh i've had it happen multiple times between chicago and milwaukee area waukegan illinois kenosha wisconsin that place is hot whenever you have a truck and if you're willing to go to the east coast out of there you can easily get over three bucks a mile every time every time every time a um, few years ago when i when i had uh, multiple company trucks um we would always position our drivers because uh, they were staying out for two or three weeks on friday we would always send them to this area on fridays and from here you know take a great weekend load like uh, 1, 1200 miles so they can do a reset uh but those are the best paying anywhere you go from here the loads are paying great you know one more question before we let this go off and listen this is for you actually what i'm doing right now we had that driver in pennsylvania right i booked him a load he is going close to charlotte for tomorrow delivery but he's gonna actually spend the day over there because the delivery appointment was 7 p.m so he's gonna be ready on thursday what do you suggest to do with him charlotte to atlanta for friday delivery and from atlanta grab something over the weekend where do you think we should go so he is going to charlotte north carolina yes he's From delivering here? tomorrow he'll be he'll be ready on thursday morning to go out where, where is he coming from he's coming out of lansdale PA. we actually grabbed a really strong load going there yeah 585 miles how much was dollars oh wow from from east coast down there right right is that is that the new guy yeah wow that's cool the thing is it delivers tomorrow late so it's kind of like a two-day transit load that's why it oh. pays that much but okay still so he's gonna do his, his reset there yeah he'll be he'll be ready to go on thursday so what i was thinking is charlotte to atlanta on thursday deliver in atlanta on friday morning and from Atlanta, come to the East Coast for over the weekend load. Does he have to come home? He doesn't. He doesn't? He doesn't. Well, wh why are you sending him home then? If I send him to Chicago, it's going to be, what, dollar sixty. If you send him home, he's just going to stay at home. Where could I send him to get a hey, good if rate? I, if a driver tells you, I can stay out, you know, you don't send him home. <laughs> <laughs> If the if the driver tells you I need to be home, that's different. Here's you know the thing, I'm though. Saying? 
Atlanta is a sketchy area. It's better Atlanta for him. Why, why do you want to send him to Atlanta? It's it's a short road. How it's what is it like? A couple of hundred miles? Yeah, 250, 270 Charlotte to Atlanta. Well, like, why don't you give him more miles? Why don't you send him north towards that area we're just talking about to, towards Chicago, Wisconsin? It doesn't have to be a one day trip. He can do two trips and then on Friday, find him something from here. And then even if he wants to go home on Friday, it's going to be a really good paying load. Yeah, but here's the thing and he's going to be ready to go on Thursday. If he starts driving from oh, Charlotte, yeah. yeah, he's going to be, he's, well, he can make it up to like oh, what, yeah. Indianapolis on Friday oh, yeah. and then it's going to deliver in the afternoon. So And yeah, yeah we're going to run a chance day. not to find anything. Well, 700. Well, he could still technically deliver Friday around noon. Yeah, best case scenario. What about Kansas City? How far? Kansas City is similar, right? Oops, too far. Because even from Kansas City, you can have a good load, but it will be a two day load to East Coast. Oh, it's 800 miles. It's too much. Yes, so if you go to Atlanta, like is it is it does is it smart to be in Atlanta on on Friday? It's not. It's not. By my experience, yeah, that's, it's not. That, I would I would send him towards Midwest, anywhere to me, even like Indianapolis or St. Louis. Indianapolis could work. It's about five hundred and seventy-five miles. St. Louis is a little bit more. I don't want to run the chance to deliver on Friday in the afternoon. <clears throat> and get stuck at the receiver for you know a couple of hours at least and then you go it's just those time frame of two hours to book something is just i don't know i don't think it's yeah, yeah but yeah. indianapolis i think it's Dra work. dragon is telling you to go either to st louis or memphis uh st louis or memphis i would i would do st louis or or, or louisville or uh, indianapolis you know somewhere memphis in that area good. Memphis could work 620 yeah. miles if we can pick up early on Thursday, deliver on Friday morning, and then from Memphis, grab something maybe coming home or Midwest because from Memphis you can actually get okay loads going to the yeah. Midwest. From Atlanta, Def it's just bad. Definitely Midwest and definitely a bigger city. Don't go to Cincinnati or Columbus or, or yeah. Toledo. Just go yeah. to one of these bigger hubs, okay? And then even with Chicago, I'm I'm sure he can be there by noon in Chicago and pick up something really good uh, from that yeah. area. That was our plan actually, but we didn't move yesterday. There weren't good loads. If we did so, move yesterday, that was my plan. So he's, uh, what time is he delivering? Uh, that's 7 today. p.m. tomorrow. What time? 7 p.m. Oh, he's delivering at 7 p.m. tomorrow. So he, does he have to do a reset or, or he's just going to wait till next day? He's just going to wait until next day. Oh, okay. Well, then he can pick up something early. You know, if he picks up something very early uh, in uh, in Atlanta on Thursday, Charlotte. Uh, Charlotte, sorry, he can be in Chicago by 10, 11 a.m. And remember, they're one hour difference, too. In Chicago, that's right. That's right. So that's right. That's right. He can, if if he's a good runner, he can make it. It's over seven. I don't know. I mean, yeah, like you're saying, it's doable. Seven hundred and sixty miles. Yeah, drive at least. Like if you can find a, a a good decent load, you know, pays well to go there. If not, then just Indianapolis, St. Louis, Memphis, like Dragon said. I would go there. Okay. I'll or you can, go, you can go to uh, Tampa or Miami. <laughs> oh, man. We almost <laughs> went to Florida. We almost went to Jacksonville for 25. Oh, yeah? But, yeah, you remember that guy? <laughs> no. Yeah, but no. Jacksonville, like, th then he's going to be there on Thursday, and he's going to do something very short until Friday for bad money and then again it's going to be in, in a bad area on friday so this this wouldn't work you know it, it wouldn't be i wouldn't do that no we're going to the midwest for sure okay uh pozdrav emro anis uh yes are are those uh glasses 
for working only or no this i wear them all the time i wear them all the time now uh there for uh, keeps up with fashion. distance huh if he keeps up with fashion <laughs> i'll see you in 20 years oh no i'm there man i have glasses i'm there okay <laughs> uh, I want to know more about USA geography for better out plane. Can you suggest me something from where and what should I study in map? I do have a video. Uh, if you go, what was the name of that video? <laughs> um, routing something. Oh, right here. Okay. Here's a video you can watch about uh, maps and and uh, and uh, it it is an old video, two years yeah. old, but still there is another one. Yeah, here's another one. And this hey, you one should maybe do a video like this, like updated one. You know? Yeah, we should update it with current uh, uh, market. Yeah. Conditions. Sure. You can maybe put rates on the lens. You know, like we're talking Atlanta base. You know, nothing coming out of there. You know, you can just add the info. You could do that. <laughs> <laughs> now georgia has been georgia has been as bad as, as as florida like people are thinking that they're gonna go to jacksonville and they're gonna grab a really good load coming out of georgia it's the same thing. yeah no nah, no it doesn't happen maybe a little bit better but you know you'll have more mm -hmm. more choices but it's not gonna be paid much better mm -hmm. um Okay, and the dragon is telling you like, hey, who who wants to be in Atlanta on Friday? Come on! Yeah, I just saw that. I just saw that. You're right, man. You're a hundred percent right. I've done it. I've done it three times with tests. Actually, uh, we got stuck in Atlanta three times. We couldn't find a load coming out of there, and he ended up spending the weekend three freaking times, and that's wow. bad. Yeah. <laughs> right, dragon is right. At Atlanta is one that. of those uh, weird areas, man. Like you, most of the United States, as 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 far as drive and loads go, is is usually around the same. You know, I mean, like not same uh, as far as paying goes, but you know, if it's a hot area or cold area or decent area, usually is it's like most areas stay the same. But Atlanta keeps changing. It, it it all the time you know sometimes it's a, it's a, it's there. It's a really it's bad a area sometimes it's an okay area it, it just keeps changing um anyway uh baby vova is asking is is just auto transportation more profitable i don't know much about auto transportation i've been hearing hearing that they're still doing okay but it's a very uh niche um industry so it's it's different i don't mess with that <laughs> look at this comment then but you're the, young in that video. <laughs> yeah he i don't know if it's uh, uh he or she but this like last time we had a conversation about this oh man okay um do his glove is saying atlanta is like girls period <laughs> it's not, it That's keeps true. changing the mood so like true. all the it's never the same. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, Chris, this has been great. Thanks for joining. Thanks for having me, man. We can do this. We can do yeah. this again. Yeah, we should be sure. Yeah, and, and I, I actually invited Emro today, but uh, he said like we next all, time. We can all actually do it. We can, we can do the yeah, three of us. Yeah, I, I invited him, but he said next time he'll join us. He, he had something okay. to do. Uh, okay. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, everyone um for watching and uh keep the your eyes on the channel uh hopefully we can do another uh live video and um yeah chris thank you yes sir see you around see you bye i think uh